Hi, this is Nick with Atlantic Laser Scanning. Today, we're going to take a look at Faro's scene registration software. Uh, not everyone uses the scene software from Faro. Uh, some people are, have elected to go with the uh, AutoCAD recap, which in essence is doing the same thing. You're taking a project that's been scanned, in this case, by a Faro laser scanner, and then you're going to need to put all the scans together to make one project. Um, some people call it stitching. It's referred to as registration, but either way, we're going to take a look at uh, registering the scans in scene from Faro. And in this case, the sphere targets were used for during the scan. Uh, it's not something that you have to use, uh, you know, do anymore. A lot of times years ago, pretty much everything had to be uh, sphere targeted uh, in order to put everything together. Uh, the software's come a long way, but there are still some uh, projects where the sphere targets are the best way to go. So let's take a look at what we're going to do uh, as soon as we would open up the scan, the uh, scene software. This is what you would see once you put the SD card in from the uh, the scanner. This is the opening page. Uh, you can see the uh, processing uh, has eight scans and the registration has one cluster. They're in red. Uh, this means that we really haven't done anything with them yet. Uh, so what we're going to do first because there are sphere targets involved, we're going to go to pre-processing, not directly to registration. So here's our, uh, our scans in our tree on the left, and the pre-processing scans icon is up on the upper left-hand corner. We're going to grab the top cluster file here. And now when I open the pre-processing, let's take a look at what the default is, because we're going to have to make some changes. So as we go through, we've got a colorization option here. And, you know, thankfully, they keep the default on non-colorization. I'm a big believer to not colorize your project. Even if you want it colorized, don't do it right away. Um, many times where you're going to scan outside, you're going to have photographs that are overexposed. It's got not going to allow you to see the actual scan data that was picked up. You may have now added color into your scans. And all you're going to see is just a white page of nothing. If you didn't have the color added into it, you would see basically a perfect black and white picture when you're looking at the, uh, at the quick view. So um, again, do not add color um, when you're doing your registration or your pre-processing. Now, as we come down here a little bit further, we're going to see some other things. Uh, here on the fine targets, again, we're using the sphere targets and uh, because of that, if you look down here a little further, you've got a registration method. So there are two things that we're going to change right off the bat. We're not going to use top view and cloud to cloud. That's the, the default option here. Uh, we're going to be using target base. And now we go to the targets, which is above it here. And we've got to choose what types of targets and even the size, depending on uh, if you've got a different size sphere that you're working with. So we could have sphere, sphere targets. We could have checkerboard targets. In this case, again, sphere targets. So we're um, set on the spheres here. Now, the sphere radii, we're actually using a 150 millimeter sphere here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and program that in. And we are going to then get rid of the... Uh, the others here. Make sure we do that right. <clears throat> now, everything else can remain the same. And we'll just start pre processing here. Now, our pre processing is completed and it looks as though it's been successful. So we're just going to hit OK and jump into Explore. And as we can see on our uh, scans tree, we've got a, uh, a green light. And uh, if we want to look at what our project looks like, we can just simply go to View and Correspondence View. Now, nothing is loaded, so we're going to be asked if we'd like to load the scans, and this is, uh, this is what we're doing here. Now, prior to the scans loading, it's easy to see uh, the uh, green circles on the screen. Those are the spheres. Those are the spheres that were used for the registration portion of this, uh, this project. And um, 
again, this is a small sample size of this project. Uh, it, obviously, something this small, you would not need to have any targets for because there's plenty of geometry around it uh, that would allow you to uh, see the project come together in a regular registration without targets. But because this is part of a two or 300 scan project in a, um, in a large plant, uh, they use the sphere targets. There's going to be a lot of um, repeating geometry and sometimes uh, that can cause some problems with the registration. And a, a lot of companies have just decided that uh, rather than relying on the registration being automatically registered with scene, uh, they would rather just go ahead and use the sphere targets. Uh, that way they can avoid the, any issues with the repeated, uh, repeated uh, geometry, the same corners, the same type of pipes, things starting to look the same can confuse the software. So anyway, here's what our project looks like. You can see they scanned the um, cabinet at different levels. Uh, there's obviously some important things that were uh, part of this particular area and uh, very, very simple. So now, lastly, most of you are going to be just using the scene software for a quick registration, putting it together before you push it downstream to another software package. A lot of times that's going to be Revit or it's going to be uh, AutoCAD. So what we would do next would be go to the export page and we can see we've got export scans, export project, and we've got a web share option. So what we're going to do is export the project. It's going to ask us to save the project, what we've done so far. And now that we've saved it, the project is going to be saved to where we want it, which is in this case, our external hard drive. And we have the options for a unordered scan export or a ordered scan project export. In this case, we're going to want to keep that ordered. So we're going to keep this in a, in a way that when we open that uh, downstream in our next software package, it is put together, it is adequately um, registered, and our accuracy is where we want it to be from scene. So we're just going to simply export this. Now, we're going to end up with an RCP, RCS file format. Again, this is something that can be used on a lot of downstream stream projects. You're not using the base FLS Feral laser scan file format that's created through the scene software. So you do not have to have um, Recap 360 in order to push this from the existing FLS file format into RCS RCP. It is part of scene software. That's as easy as it is to go ahead and export that. You can zip that into a file and then, you know, use that in any other package that you might need. Uh, if you have any questions on this or anything else, you can always email us at info at AtlanticLaserScanning.com. Again, our website's AtlanticLaserScanning.com, and our phone number is 800-955-3960. Uh, we will be able to uh, continue with these uh, scene and ferro scanning tutorials, also digital twin tutorials, and we have ferro laser scanners available for rent and for sale. So if you have any questions, please let us know if we can help. Thank you. Now our pre-processing is completed and it looks as though it's been successful. So we're just going to hit OK and jump into Explore. And as we can see on our uh, scans tree, we've got a, uh, a green light. And uh, if we want to look at what our project looks like, we can just simply go to View and Correspondence View. Now nothing is loaded. So we're going to be asked if we'd like to load the scans, and this is, uh, this is what we're doing here. Now, prior to the scans loading, it's easy to see uh, the uh, green circles on the screen. Those are the spheres. Those are the spheres that were used for the registration portion of this, uh, this project. And um, again, this is a small sample size of this project. Uh, it, obviously, something this small, you would not need to have any targets for because there's plenty of geometry around it uh, that would allow you to uh, see the project come together in a regular registration without targets. But because this is part of a two or 300 scan project in a, um, in a large plant, uh, 
they use the sphere targets. There's going to be a lot of um, repeating geometry, and sometimes uh, that can cause some problems with the registration. And a, a lot of companies have just decided that uh, rather than relying on the registration being automatically registered with SCENE, uh, they would rather just go ahead and use the sphere targets. Uh, that way they can avoid the, any issues with the repeated, uh, repeated uh, geometry, the same corners, the same type of pipes, things starting to look the same can confuse the software. So anyway, here's what our project looks like. You can see they scanned the um, cabinet at different levels. Uh, there's obviously some important things that were uh, part of this particular area and uh, very, very simple. So now, lastly, most of you are going to be just using the scene software for a quick registration, putting it together before you push it downstream to another software package. A lot of times that's going to be Revit or it's going to be uh, AutoCAD. So what we would do next would be go to the export page. And we can see we've got export scans, export project, and we've got a web share option. So what we're going to do is export the project. It's going to ask us to save the project, what we've done so far. And now that we've saved it, the project is going to be saved to where we want it, which is in this case, our external hard drive. And we have the options for a unordered scan export or a ordered scan project export. In this case, we're going to want to keep that ordered. So we're going to keep this in a, in a way that when we open that uh, downstream in our next software package, it is put together, it is adequately um, registered, and our accuracy is where we want it to be from scene. So we're just going to simply export this. Now, we're going to end up with an RCP, RCS file format. Again, this is something that can be used on a lot of downstream stream projects. You're not using the base FLS Feral laser scan file format that's created through the scene software. So you do not have to have um, Recap 360 in order to push this from the existing FLS file format into RCS RCP. It is part of scene software. That's as easy as it is to go ahead and export that. You can zip that into a file and then, you know, use that in any other package that you might need. Uh, if you have any questions on this or anything else, you can always email us at info at AtlanticLaserScanning.com. Again, our website's AtlanticLaserScanning.com, and our phone number is 800-955-3960. Uh, we will be able to uh, continue with these uh, scene and ferro scanning tutorials, also digital twin tutorials, and we have ferro laser scanners available for rent and for sale. So if you have any questions, please let us know if we can help. Thank you.